The Chinese government finished its annual Central Economic Work Conference recently. This meeting is kind of a big deal. Everyone in the China's Central Politburo attended, and the purpose of the meeting was set to reflect on this year's economic situation and set the policy agenda for next year. For meetings like this, there are usually lots of propaganda saying how great the economic growth is. Like, under the leadership of the Chinese Communist Party and the great leadership of Xi Jinping, China's economy is better than ever. But in this year's meeting, we don't see too much of such glorified wording. They even admitted that China's economy isn't going well. In their summary statement, the word stability was mentioned 25 times. The fact that the Chinese Communist Party needs to emphasize stability so many times, that could only mean China's economy is very unstable. Moreover, 2022 will be an even more challenging year ahead. As the world's second largest economic entity, China's economic status will have a huge impact on everyone around the world. So today we'll dive into this aspect and see how unstable things are over there. Welcome to Beyond the News, I'm Fei. From the Chinese Communist Party's official summary statement, China's economy is facing three big problems. Demand contraction, supply shocks and weakening expectations. We'll go through each of them here. Demand contraction is a key sign showing that the economy is shrinking. And the most telling part is that the Chinese people aren't spending as much as they used to. According to the Chinese government's official stats, during the first 10 months of 2021, the total retail sales has been on continuous downward trend. This is the result of the massive unemployment, hence the significant reduction in people's income in China. And funny enough, the Chinese government has themselves to blame for that. We have talked about most of this in our previous programs. At the first six months of 2020, the Chinese government was cracking down industries one after another. First, the tech industry, then the entertainment, then the tutoring industry, and many others were all cracked down by the Iron Fist. Take the tutoring industry as an example. Two days after the Chinese government announced that tutoring companies can no longer be for profit, there was a Chinese article titled The Tutoring Industry is Dead. 700,000 tutoring organizations and 10 million workers. What is their way out? Imagine 10 million people suddenly lost their jobs. How would that impact the society? Now, tutoring is just one small industry. Many other industries are facing the same problems. If we connect all of them together, it is like a web of unemployment that is all over China now. Next, let's talk about the second problem, the supply shocks. We can look at this problem from two aspects, the energy supply and the material supply. In the past few months, the energy price was skyrocketing across the world and China is no exception. For November this year, China's production price index PPI had a 12.9% increase compared to that of the same time last year. And in the same month, China's consumer price index CPI had a 2.3% monthly increase, even though it doesn't seem to be that much, but it's the biggest in 15 months. So we can see, even though the manufacturers are absorbing as much cost as they can to keep the price stable, the inflation will inevitably reach to the consumers. All these signs are suggesting that the Chinese economy is entering into stagflation, high inflation but slow growth rate. Apart from the energy supply and the material supply, there is another supply problem that China is facing, semiconductor chips. In today's age, pretty much everything has chips in them, not just computers. Right now, the US sanction on China's semiconductor companies is causing big problems for China's IT-related industry. Without being able to import chips from the West, there are a lot of products in China can no longer produce, especially technically demanded products. Huawei is a clear example. Its global smartphone market share slumped to 4% in 2021 due to the US sanctions. Reminding you that at quarter one of 2019, it was almost 20%. The US sanction on China only gets heavier in 2022, so 2022 will be a much tougher year for China regardless of its own bad economic bubble, such as the real estate industry.
The third one is the weakening expectation. According to the Chinese government's own economic blue book, in 2022, they expect China's GDP growth to be around 5.3%. Back when she first took charge, they were talking about keeping the GDP growth rate to be above 7%. A few years later, they were saying mm, maybe 6%. Now they're saying 5.3%. I think we can see where this is heading. The partial reason for this weakening expectation is due to the outside world environment. After China joined the WTO in 2000, China enjoyed all the benefits of globalization and was the most favored trading nation for the US. Now, 20 years later, the joyride has come to an end. Due to the Chinese government's own hostile diplomacy and indecent business practice, countries around the world now detest the communist China. Most of them no longer want to do business with the communist China. The fact that Xi Jinping's talk on internal circulation shows you how bad the situation is outside of China. For those who are not familiar with the term, the so-called internal circulation is a strategy to reorient China's economy by prioritizing domestic consumption. China is known for its export and famous for having made-in-China products selling all over the world. Even just last year under the COVID, 90% of its GDP came from exports. Now that the Chinese government is reorienting its focus to domestic, China's economy will be even worse. But as mentioned above, if it wasn't for China's wolf diplomacy, its indecent business trading, its human rights atrocities in Hong Kong, Xinjiang and Tibet, etc., not to mention its intellectual theft, China wouldn't be so isolated by the world community. Surely the Chinese Communist government has itself to blame for it. So we can see that China is facing some serious economic problems in 2022. So what are they going to do about it? Well, they will try everything they can to keep the economy stable. Whether they are able to do it is another story. Let's look at one policy they're trying to implement, making more babies. In a statement, it said that the government needs to actively implement the new family planning policy to combat China's aging population. The problem of the aging population really gets on CCP's nerves. You can even say that they are now very desperate. Recently, a Chinese news outlet published an article titled Implementing Three-Child Policy, Communist Party Members Should Take the Lead. <laughs> if you think the title is ridiculous enough, wait until you read the article. The article stated, every Communist Party member cannot use any reason as an excuse for not getting married, for not having kids, or just having one or two kids. Hmm. In other words, the CCP members must have three kids or more. This article was later taken down due to too many negative comments, but this just shows you how desperate that the Chinese Communist Party is on this issue. I think it is possible in the near future that the Chinese Communist Party will have some kind of mandatory requirements for how many children people must have. Possibly they will even be forcing people to get married before a certain age. However, after three decades of inhuman one-child policy rampant, it is impossible to reverse China's population trend. According to reports in China, a family of three is no longer the norm. Most people are either single or just married with no kids. According to China's census data, in 2020, the average family size is 2.62 people, so it is not even three. Again, the Chinese government can only blame themselves for the mess they created. So even though the Chinese Communist Party is desperate, policies alone are not enough to make more people having more babies. Will this change in 2022? I hardly doubt that. And that was just one of many policies mentioned in the statement. You can see there are a lot of challenges ahead for China. So the next question is, is China's economy going to be stable in 2022? I think Xi Jinping will try his best to achieve that. Not because he loves the Chinese people, but 2022 is a crucial year for him. Whether he will be having a third term. Even though he's now the top dog for life, he still faces a lot of opposition within the Communist Party. Xi's political enemies would love to see China's economy fail, because that would give them the handles to bring Xi down. If they did bring Xi down, all those corrupt officials Xi took down will go after him for revenge. 
So you could say Xi's life now depends on how China's economy in 2022. But some of the problems are too big to fix. So I guess 2022 will be an eventful year for China, mostly not for good in the usual sense. What do you make of that? Let me know in the comments below. All right, that's all for today. If you like our show, please like and subscribe and don't forget to turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching Beyond the News. I'm Faye. I'll see you again very soon.